Hello, my name is Rich Howard, owner of Architectural Builder Supply, and I have a client, we have a client, that has sent us in, just mailed to us, a couple of hinges. The original hinge, and that's, uh, that's some good work right there. That's uh, a home I grew up in in uh, the northwest suburbs of Chicago, built in about 1963 or so, had pecan... Uh, cabinet doors um, and um, this antique copper style colored hinge, a little bit lighter, uh, but nonetheless. So I'm I'm thinking this is going to be 60s or 70s, um, and then a his brand new hinge that he bought. I don't know where he bought it from. He didn't buy it from us. He may have. Um, if he did, I'm just not aware of the order number. But they are, um, for all intents purposes, the exact hinge. They are the same inset they are the same overlay and we can show that by just holding the hinges up together and while it doesn't it may not be exactly obvious to you they're they're the same overlay and same inset and, and the client says they don't work the new one doesn't work it, it rubs so he just out of you know maybe you know as a last attempt this is the one i need to replace need this style in brushed nickel okay I can't seem to make this style work this is the finish I want but does not close properly when installed I follow the old pattern screw pattern screw pattern follows the old screw pattern so they're the same hole locations that matches up just without any trouble at all but he goes on to say it seems he follows the old pattern it seems to rub rub before it closes. I'm looking to replace the old copper finish. Can't seem to find this slender of a hinge. Please advise. Okay, great. So, um, the inset is the dimension that the door will sit into the opening. You can have a, you know, you can have doors that are inset where they're fully flush with the face of the casework. That's an inset application. This is an inset application as well because the door will reside in this area. This is the inset. So the inset on this hinge, three eighths maybe? Yeah, right, 0.363 is what I'm measuring. So that's that would be called a three eighths inset. There are, that that's a good inset. Three eighths, half inch, you even see five eighths. You see three quarter inch inset. I had a client about a month ago, couldn't find, had the same type of hinge, except it was a 5 8 inset. And that's very unusual. I'm not a cabinet hinge expert, but over the decades, you know, I get involved in them. I, I'm forced to face them and, and solve problems with them like now. So this is a 3 8 inset. It's also an overlay because the door overlays the face of the opening. Okay. If you have a door that's fully inset, it doesn't overlay because it's in and flush with the casework. When you have a door that's overlay, it doesn't stick into the casework at all because it's laying over the face. This is a hybrid. It's somewhat inset and it's somewhat overlay. It's both. Um, and the overlay on this is probably 3 8 as well. Yeah, it's 3 8 as well. So it's a 3 8 overlay here to here. It's a 3 8 inset here to here. That's what we're dealing with. Now, if I were to measure the replacement hinge, I've got three, I've got three eighths inset. I've got three eighths overlay. It's the same hinge. So the question is, why is this rubbing? Well, it, the, the only way that the door can really rub is on the hinge on the inside face of the door on the hinge side, on that inside corner is the only place it would rub. Okay, because he's putting the hinge back where it was. And um, let's switch to the screen view and just take a closer look and define at a couple of the, uh, of, the, of the definitions that we're using here. Let's do that now. So let's just, in no particular order, let's just define some terms. Um, we've talked about, you've got a jam. You've got the other jam here, casework. When the door is inset, it's flush here. The door is just simply inset. Um, you know, you're going to have a hinge, whatever the type of hinge 
may be, you know, it could be like this, it's inset. Now when you have a door that is, sorry for the, out of, the awful out of scale drawing, that's awful. Okay, you have an inset and you have an overlay. Okay, an overlay door An overlay door would be just literally this. That's an overlay. Okay, but in our client's situation, he's got he's got a door that does like that. Okay, so it's inset and it's overlay. So the Amarok catalog that I have pulled up here, if you go to our site and click on the word manufacturers anywhere that you find it, and then do a find function on your keyboard for Amarok. You pull that up, and I'm going to open up this 2012 product catalog that I have here. And about page 90 or so is where the hinges start. I only know because I'm, I'm into this catalog once a month, it seems. Um, <clears throat> now you're going to have some different definitions. This would be just an overlay hinge. What do they call it? Well, they call it face mount. <clears throat> yeah, sure. I mean, the door happens to be an overlay application. It's a face mount, is what it is. Um, different variety. Okay, here's one. Here is a inset application. Here's here's exactly the hinge we're working on. It's a three eighths inset with a three eighths overlay. Is what that is. Okay. Now I want you to take note of this line right here. Just, just remember that I'm pointing that out to you right there. Um, and as you scroll through the rest of this catalog, you're going to see variations on it. Now, the issue with the 2012 catalog is there's nothing wrong with it. It's, it's a catalog that's eight years old at this point. Um, however, over the decades, lots of different hinges have existed. <clears throat> Here's a different overlay, a quarter inch overlay. I don't know of all of the different overlays that exist or the insets. Well, here's a half inch overlay. All right, so you got two right there. Well, you got three, a uh, quarter, three eighths, and a half. And I just show this catalog to you because it does help one, you know, come up with an appreciation of what the terms are. Um, you know, they're just geometric shapes. That that really all you're that's really all you're working on. You know, now here would be a an example of a of just a an inset where you have a full surface hinge, and you do see these hinges every once in a while, especially this hammered copper. I think that's what they might call it. AC. I'm not sure what AC is. Antique copper, obviously, that sort of idea. Here's another option. You know, it's mounted behind everything, but you're still going to have a um, inset application. Full inset is what they call that. We're just calling it inset. So this catalog's helpful. Now, to make it even worse, here is a 1946 product catalog. And <clears throat> the client that I had last month was looking for this 5 8 inset. And while this is a little bit of a muddy view, um, this is what the client needed. He needed a hinge. And, I, and his home was indeed from the early 1950s, a 5 8 inset. And back just after World War II, they made 3 8 half inch, 5 8 and 3 quarter. So different insets. So the question becomes is, why is this client's uh, application rubbing? Well, his door has to be like this. In some way, shape, or form. Okay. Has to be like this. Screwed here. Um, on some hinges, there's a screw here, but not on this one. This is just going to screw to the back side of that. That's your vertical axis of pivoting. Now, the only place it can be rubbing, in my estimation, is right here. Because there's no other, there's nowhere else it's going to rub. I mean, if he's followed the same screw locations, on the hinge itself, looking at it in the in the face of the hinge, you 
you know, there's there's nowhere else for it to rub. So it, it has to be rubbing here. I don't know that it is, but I can't think of anywhere else where it will be. Maybe it's rubbing here, but we have the same... Um, we have the same overlay, and what we could do is test to see if the dimension from this part of the door to where the screws are is the same dimension, and I've basically done that, and I have, you know, come up with the answer that, yes, the vertical axis of pivoting um, is... In a situation where, in my estimation, what's actually happening between the two hinges is the dimension from where the inset and overlay begins to the vertical axis of where the screw holes are on his replacement hinge, that dimension is actually slightly larger. And I can tell you that it is slightly larger to a measurable amount and as I hold the hinges on my desktop and as I get them aligned I can demonstrate to you that they point uh, where the hinges fall are going to be inherently in a noticeably different location and I'm going to demonstrate that so this problem here doesn't account for it rubbing here it would account for it rubbing here, pardon me, here, because that hinge, because the distance from here to here is greater than the original by, and I, I'll estimate that now. Just bear with me, if you will. just somewhat eyeballing that. You know, I have to say that it appears to be A hundred thousandths of an inch, so almost an eighth is what it appears to be. So that 0.1 inch is forcing the door over most definitely to this direction. There's another problem though in the, uh, that I've discovered as well. So, and I'll, I'll show you both of these, but the next problem is this. Looking at the hinge leaf, Okay. Looking at the hinge leaf in an exaggerated fashion, just trying to duplicate that there. <clears throat> this plane here and this plane here. On the existing hinge, the hinge, this is the existing hinge, this area sits higher in relationship to this part of the hinge than it does on the, re on the replacement hinge, which clearly sits at or flush to. It's either slightly below or it's flush to this, where the original hinge, this area here, sits higher. And I've measured it, and it's about 40 thousandths of an inch. So that would account for rubbing that would occur here because... You've got the door wanting to move in this far because the dimension is increased from where you're mounting it on the frame to where the door is allowed to sit. It's The dimension is greater by about 40 thousandths. So if it's rubbing in one position, it's either here or here, or it's rubbing in both positions. And I would think... Uh, well, I don't really know. I can't. I can't guess where it is. But 
you know, the difference is far more egregious here. If that hinge, if that margin here was very tight, like a sixteenth of an inch, yeah, I would expect it would rub. And if that door was really tight to the face of the jam, like touching it basically, with that forty thousandths, yes, I would expect it to, to, to be rubbing there as well. So while this hinge seems to be an exact replacement, it's not an exact, an exact replacement. So what do you do? Um, well, obviously, doing some sort of cosmetic rework to the existing hinges is a thought, but I think that's an awful idea. Um, you can't get a paint. You're not going to get these clean enough from the decades of use, probably to take a decent finish. Although, <clears throat> I don't know if there's anything in here that's not metal, but if it's not... You may be able to do, if 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 you are not opposed to exerting a substantial amount of work, you might be able to mask off what you don't want painted and then powder coat this, uh, the original hinge, or you might um, take a planer or no 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 not a planer, take a get this onto a router table and route this hip back here an eighth of an inch. Route this back a sixteenth of an inch. Just um, route that back a sixteenth. Uh, very likely route that back an eighth, and that will relieve your problem. Doors come off. They're going to go on a router table. It's quick, fast, and easy. Doors go back up. You'll be in front of the TV watching football in no time. Uh, let's wrap up this video on camera, and I'll demonstrate the um, what the di the differences are. So it'll be a little bit difficult to really tell the difference here by me just holding the hinges up, but you you might be able to detect it. So as I have those hinges laid over each other, and they are, for all intents purposes very close to the same orientation to each other. You can clearly see the satin nickel hinge. When I have them both tight against my scale here, when I have them tight against the scale, okay, here we go. And while the satin nickel hinge is not exactly, the jam leaf is not exactly in the same position, you can clearly see that that dimension is different. Because it's greater, it's going to force the door to move in that way, because that dimension is greater. He's using the same holes. Obviously, what would fix the hole, that problem as well, would be to drill all of these holes out, a little bit bigger, whatever the size would need to be. Don't quote me, but 3 16 Insert a dowel rod. Okay, clean the face of it, um, position the door where it needs to be so that nothing rubs, redrill the two holes. That would also solve the problem. So we can, we can see just without me getting out the caliper that that's clearly going to cause that rubbing on the opposite side. Okay, just there. You can tell that they're not, that the satin nickel hinge is off. Now the other uh, the other rubbing air potential area is if you look at the relationship of the back of the leaf to where the back of the hinge is here. I'm going to hold it so it's flat. You can see that it's above that line. It's above. When we look at the satin nickel hinge and we hold it in the same relationship, it's going to be all but imperceptible. But it's either flush or maybe under, slightly under, and I've measured that to be about 40 thousandths of an inch. It's less than a sixteenth, but who knows? Maybe that's what's causing it. So these imperceptible differences is what the problem is. Depending on where it's actually rubbing for the client, and I don't know um, where it's rubbing, 
very likely a router table. Uh, I don't think you'll have to refinish anything. Well, you probably would. And you open up your doors, if it's the lateral problem, you'd have to refinish it. But it's going to be one of the two potential problems. Um, you know, the dowel idea of uh, drilling new holes is not such an awful idea. It's just that the back of the frame is probably going to be finished. And as you move that hinge over, you're going to probably have some uh, unfinished area on this side once you have basically relocated the screw hole that way ever so slightly. But when you drill, when you insert a dowel rod, if you need to do repair work to a wood door, if you have, here's an actual example, you have a mortise lock installed onto the front door of a home, you have a, a gorgeous grip handle on the outside, big giant Baldwin Versailles trim on the outside, beautiful material. You have the escutcheon on the inside and an ornate lever on the inside. Well, you rotate that and you move that three six by seven foot two and a quarter inch, you know, twenty panel mahogany door and it's solid lumber. It's not veneer at all. Uh, you know, um, built out of two pieces of lumber, like six quarter that have been lam not six quarter, probably eight quarter that have been planed down and laminated together. That door's got some weight to it. All of that movement of everything back and forth is on that little set screw holding that trim on. And what will happen is, you know, as you rotate that, this, the, this, the uh, escutcheon on the inside can also be stressed. And all you've got are these tiny little screws holding it on. And if you've not pre-drilled that hole very well, the trim will, the escutcheon will come loose. Pull that off, drill a bigger hole, glue, get the right size dowel, drill that hole, glue, put the dowel in, make sure it's flush, let it set overnight, then redrill your holes. Put those screws right back into solid lumber because that door was made of mahogany, which is not great when it comes to screw withdrawal strength. It's not going to be screw withdrawal strength uh, tough like a like a you know like maple um, or the exotic material, African species of wood, even oak for that matter, for goodness sakes. Um, you know, mahogany is a is a, and it was a Hon, it was a Central American species uh, of mahogany. So it's heavy, but not super heavy, but not very dense when it comes to screw withdrawal strength. So um, those are the ideas that I've come up with, and I hope that that helps solve the problem. And um, please do let me know how it turns out, and let me know what to do with your hinges. I don't, I do have your address. I will wait for your response and get them sent back to you. Thank you. Again, thank you for watching, and if you've enjoyed this video, please click thumbs up, please subscribe, and maybe even send the video to someone that you know. Thank you.